In this video, I'm going to show you how I swatch in the round. I like to use a 24 inch circular, which is what I have right here, but you can also use a 32 inch if that's all you have. In this demo, I'll be doing stockinette stitch in the round, but the technique is the same regardless of the stitch pattern that you're using. So to start, you're going to cast on just like you typically would. Now after a cast on, you typically would turn your needle and your working yarns over here and you would just work across those stitches. But when you're swatching in the round, you're gonna to wanna to do something a little bit different. We're actually going to take all these stitches that are on this needle and we're going to slide them to the other end of the needle, just like this. So our goal here is we're gonna be wanting to work across the stitches in this direction. Now, it, it seems kind of weird because your working yarn is on the other end, but let me show you how we work that. So you're going to insert your needle into the first stitch. Then you're gonna take your working yarn, let me flip this over so you can see, and we're gonna drape it along the back, making sure to leave some slack. You can often use your left hand fingers, kind of pushing it like this to kind of ensure that you're giving it some slack. Then you're gonna drape it over the needle and then you're going to knit that stitch. Okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and knit to the end of the row. Okay, we're just about at the end of the row. Just have these two stitches. Okay, now again, if we were working in regular stockinette stitch, I would turn the work, but we're not gonna do that. So just like we did for the first row, we're going to slide the stitches back to the end of this needle here. And as you can see, here is the wrong side of our work. You can see on that first row, here's the yarn draped across the back, and we're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and insert my needle into the first stitch. I'm gonna take my working yarn and flip it over so you can see. So I'm draping it across the back of the work, making sure to leave some slack. Oops, that's okay if that happens. Just like that, you just try again. So I'm going to insert my needle and Knit that first stitch. The first stitch is always the trickiest as you're draping, but then once you do that first stitch, you just go ahead and knit to the end of the row. And I'm gonna turn the work over again just for a second, just so you can kind of see those drapes going along the back. Okay, let's do it just one more time. So we got to the end of the row. You're going to slide the stitches to the other end. Then you're going to insert the needle into the first stitch. Then often it's easy, easier to hold both of the needles with your left hand as you grab the yarn that's on the other end and you're gonna drape it across the back. And then you're going to knit that first stitch and then knit to the end of the row. So essentially what we're doing with this technique is we're always knitting in the same direction. And this mimics the way that you would be knitting in the round because there is no wrong side when you're knitting in the round. So our swatch is coming along here and I'm gonna flip it over again so you can see our strands in the back. Now, once you've completed your swatch, you'll bind off as usual. And I have a finished in the round swatch right here, I'll show you. So I had bound off just like normal and I'm gonna flip it over so you can see all of my strands here. Now you can measure your swatch like this but I find that all the yarn draping along the back, it's hard to measure, plus it can distort the stitches because as you can see, it's sort of pulling in on both sides. So you're gonna wanna cut them. But first, 
as you can see, especially usually on one side, um, the stitches are really kind of loosey goosey here. So I like to tighten them up a little bit before I cut. And let me show you how I do that. So I start usually at the top, even though you could start at the bottom, there's no reason. Um, but I start at the top and with my left hand, I sort of hold the yarn like this. And then I go like this with my right finger. So I'm just cinching up a little bit. And I try not to go too tight because that could also distort the stitches a little bit. I just wanna go tight enough so it sort of cleans up the edges a little bit and it's not so loose. So just like this all along. So as you can see, it's already looking a lot nicer along that edge. And it's usually this side that always needs it more. This side's a little bit loose, but not as bad, but I'm still gonna do the same thing. Okay. That looks much better now. So now it's time to cut the strands. So let me grab my scissors. And all you're gonna do is cut up straight up the middle. So I'll start at the bottom here. Okay, so as you can see, the swatch will lay a lot better with these strands that are all cut. Now, like I always recommend with swatching, you're gonna wanna measure this swatch before you block and then block the swatch and then remeasure it. This way you'll really know how much your gauge might change after you block. So that is how you swatch in the round.